Maing buntag. Mag, pag maginaan ko feeling ko si Michael Jackson ko nga na naupaw. Pero bagay. Ha? Hello, sound check. Pastor, wa ko kay bawa on saon ni pag-on. Kay taga bukid jud mi. Ayun. Check yon. Ah, uh, dungog ko diha. Uh, while ayuso na sa atong sa atong ano ah uh, guwapo nga amigo yan nako lang yung volume kasi hello sound check ayun hey 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 check 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 mic test yan anong problema di pwedeng ibutang skillet ha Ah, nagsabay yung on yung? Ah, na off na. Okay. Thank you. Ayan. I-adjust na lang ni Butter. So, I don't want nga maanad or masanay or maging familiar. Although, si Ginamig balik-balik dere. And salamat sa ginoo nga kaning lugar ay welcome pa ang ang welcome pa ang truth and we're blessed dahil uh, ang inyong pastor dire ay talagang nag nag ano po nag nagbigay ng opportunity para not only in this church but even in this place ay uh, magiging available po ang ang truth Bro, kahit dito sa side na ito, ana, kahit hindi, di, dili ito nga. Yan, para lang mag ano. Mamaya magiging clearer yan. Pwede papatay na lang ng kaning ilaw dire, pastor, para uh, dili na kay hayag. Nga, naapadyod akong agtang, musamot o kahayag. Uh, so, yan. Okay. So, Let's pray muna bago ta ma, bago ta mga karnal no sa nila. Let's pray. Lord, uh, nagpapasalamat kami sa inyo na nagkaroon ulit ng opportunity dito sa Manolo Fortich, especially dito sa Verity Baptist Church, Lord, ng ganitong gawain na Bible conference and uh, salamat dahil ikaw po nag nagbigay ng grace sa church na ito na magiging Lord, uh, mayroon silang capacity para magkaroon sila ng capacity and ability, Panginoon, para ma-perform ito at maging available ito sa mga naghahanap ng katotohanan. Salamat sa kanilang care and concern, Panginoon, especially sa kanilang pastor at sa mga bawat miyembro sa church na ito na mag-host ng ganitong napaka, ano Lord, malaking pribilihiyo Uh, para sa bawat isa. Salamat din sa mga kapatiran namin from all over the Philippines, Panginoon, na nandito, naging present, and even sa mga papunta pa lang, ikaw po patuloy ang mag-ingat sa kanila. And Lord, aking dalangin, ikaw po patuloy ang mag-undertake, mag, uh, lalong-lalo na sa aming gawain today, na wa, Lord, ay maging fruitful, magiging uh, Lord blessing ang mga pag-uusapan namin since this morning hanggang matapos mamayang gabi. Ikaw po mag-enable sa bawat preachers. And Lord, I know na ako po ang una ngayon and um, we have to break the ice, Lord. And uh, may mga little adjustment, but be with us, lalo na itong mortal flesh na ito, Panginoon, na hindi po madala sa antok or Lord, hindi ma mabaling ang aming attention sa ibang bagay. Batulungan niyo kami na mag-focus sa inyong salita at mag-focus, Lord, Uh, lang lalo na sa pagpakinig ng inyong salita. And Lord, uh, ikaw po patuloy mag-bless mag nito hanggang matapos bukas at sa mga susunod pa 
ng mga gawain this week, Panginoon. And we bless you and we thank you. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, wag tayong masyadong formal, ba, bro, na nawala. Pa. Nag-ano lang siguro. I-ano ko lang, ha. Take ko lang. Ayan. So, kung pwede mo pang mapalakihan o small, kung smaller siya, try mo nga yung maximize yung size, bro. Kung maatras mo siya or, or ano. Mamaya. Oh. So, actually, ang aking mission, kasi ang atin pong topic dyan ay genuine salvation can be, o oh, i-move din yan. Ano yung tawag doon? Genuine salvation can be achieve ng by rightly dividing. So ang ating topic po ngayong ngayong ano, ngayong umaga ay Yan. I- I- itaas mo bro kahit nakaganyan. Ngayon. Okay. okay lang yan. Uh, makikita yan mamaya. Kita niyo diyan? So hindi tayo lalalim today kasi foundational ang atong pag-uusapan sa araw na ito. And actually, this is a primer. Ibig sabihin ng primer, primer to rightly dividing. Ibig sabihin ng primer ay marag pakati ba kung sa bisaya pa. So, uh, but this is very important foundational. This is primer to rightly dividing. Mamaya, merong mga subjects Later and even tomorrow will build on top sa ating pag-aaralan today. So I want you to understand and to state my intention before po tayo, before po tayo na dadako sa ating lesson. Lalong lalo na sa mga pastors natin na kakilala lang natin. Nag-adjust ako kung kung saan ako mag. Teka, pahinaan ko lang ng konte siguro. Hello, son. Wala na din. Hey, sound check. Check. Ayun na mag-adjust bro ha, kasi pag ano ko nag echo Now, I- I'll state my intention, lalong-lalo na sa mga pastors, ito yung motives natin and prayer natin. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, I'd like you to go there, 2 Corinthians 1, in verse number 24, gagamitin ko yung statement ni Apostle Paul, and sa lahat ng mga conferences at karamihan sa mga conferences, pwera na lang sa mga makalimutan kong mag-introduction. Pero if you heard me, if you've been with us sa mga meetings natin, ay palagi kong tinatakbuhan itong verse na ito para hindi tayo ma- mag-appear na uh, ano po, ma- or ma-misunderstand ang ating intentions and purpose and purposes. In verse 24, sabi ni Paul, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. I'd like you to understand that kung may maituro man kami, lalo na sa mga bago nating kaibigang pastors nandito, kung may something kayong manatutunan, kung may something kayong maybe kakaiba, or na-bless kayo, please don't think that we are above you. Don't think that we know better. Uh, we, I'm a Bible student. We've been in this ministry traveling sa Pilipinas since 2009 by the grace of God. But uh, we are still a student and, and wala kaming dominion to over the faith of someone else. I'm no better sa mga man of God dito. Ang lahat na meron na tanggap tayo ay biyaya ng Panginoon. So, pagdating sa kayabangan, achievement, pagdating, so it's, it must be excluded. Okay? Uh, years ng experience, many years of teaching, it must be excluded. So, not that we're not here para ipakita sa inyo kung anong alam namin, kung anong galing namin, far be it sa mind nyo. Yun ang gusto kong maintindihan natin, not that we have dominion over your faith. Baka mas magaling pa kayo sa ibang areas, sa ibang subjects sa amin, Pero gusto ko lang ipaabot sa inyo na uh, hindi yon ang intention namin. 
Bakit? Ano po? For by, uh, sabi dito, but our helpers of your joy. Ang pakay namin is, gusto lang namin magiging helper. Ang, I believe, ang mga ministers of God ay mga katulong. Ang term. Katulong po kami. Hindi kami mga hari. Hindi kami mga big shots. Hindi kami. Mga katulong po kami. Mga teachers, supposedly preachers. Ang tawag sa Bible sa kanila, minister. And minister means servant. Ministry means service. Okay? So, helpers. We are succors. So, gusto kong ma maka maabot sa puso ninyo na we are not here to quarrel. We are not here to present ourselves that kami yung pinakatama, kami yung pinakamagaling, and we'll never do that by the grace of God. And what we have is just something na binigay ng Panginoon sa amin throughout many years, na tinuturo din namin, not something new, not something that we personally discover, not something that is directly revealed to us of God, because tapos na tayo sa mga bagay na yun. This is something that God graciously bestowed to us using also teachers before us, using also mentors, using also some people, mga other Bible students na ginamit ng Panginoon sa buhay namin. And we are just applying sa sinasabi ni Apostle Paul, yung things na natutunan namin is i-commit namin sa faithful men that we may be able, to, that they may be able to teach others also. Yun ang goal natin. But una, bago mo may turo sa iba, Sabi doon, are helpers of your joy. I believe when you learn something from the Word of God, when you uncover truth or some Bible truth sa Word of God, one of the most natural, ano po, mga kapatid, yung effect nito sa buhay ng isang Kristiyano or isang Bible student ay mag-create mag ito ng joy. And I would like to be a helper doon sa ano na yan, sa, sa part na yan. And instead of maging critical kayo sa mga matutunan nyo, kung nandyan sa Bible, just rejoice with the Lord and we'll be rejoicing with you. Because these are the things that give us joy in the ministry. The things that we're going to present to you give us some strong motivations as well to, to serve the Lord, to share the truth, and give us that joy that no, nobody could give, not even the world, not even anything. And I would like you to rejoice with me. And I will help you in regards to that. This is nothing new. But this is something that is just the devil shut up the eyes and the minds of everyone para hindi may paabot sa atin at ni-lockdown tayo sa mga traditions, ni-lockdown tayo sa mga sistema para hindi natin makita to. Pero salamat pa rin. God will not stop working until the light of the glorious gospel will shine doon sa puso ng bawat isa. So, you pray with me as well as I teach. And sa mga teachers natin, preachers natin mamaya, I'd like you to pray. Pray for our host, pastor. Yun ang prayer niya palagi dito. Pray for the host church. Yun ang prayers nila. Sa lahat ng ini-invite nila, sa lahat ng pinapapunta nila dito, na itong gawain nila they spend much dito sa ano they spend a lot of the resources dito and many labors for one thing lang kahit one soul lang ang makatanggap ng truth worth it na yan Amen. worth it na yan okay so let's let's do that ngayon and let's be prayerful so supposedly i have one teacher with me na kasama this morning when I told him na he'll be teaching with me this morning, nag-back out siya kasi he'll, he'll be so busy which we understand na talagang ano siya na mahihirapan siya sa schedule niya pero he'll be here but uh, I'll take that chance since hindi naman niya in ano, uh, I'll take yung ina-assign ko supposedly na topic sa kanya, ating ituturo yun. So, uh, be patient with me I'll be the only teacher this morning. And if we have three hours, that's very short for me. Kasi itong mga subjects, lessons natin, to others, this would take many, many ano, <laughs> years. But we'll try our best na ma-nail lang natin. Alam mo yun, mag-nail lang tayo ng pako. That's the goal. It's not the 
quantity. Basta gusto ko lang makakuha ng quality lang sa inyo. Who cares if I cannot finish the lesson? Basta babaon lang yung truth. That is good enough. Amen. And I promise, by the grace of God, if you listen to the, to the Word of God, if you li just listen intently, I promise, by the grace of God, that I will not waste your time. Amen. If we will take three hours, as a Bible student, kung first time yung ganun, makulture shock na kayo na makulture shock, but that's the way, mga kapatid, studying is a hard work, is a hard labor. It is a weariness in the mind. It is, it is something na ma, pag hindi ka sanay, napapagod ka. At, uh, pero, pero pag once na mahook in ka na, may mga precious truths na makukuha mo na, nakalimutan mo na kung ilang oras siya. In a, parang feeling mo, ula, saglit lang ah. Parang ganun na, three hours na pala yun. Parang bitin na. So, kasi excited ka if, if Yung sa mga bagay mong gusto mong ginagawa, Parang time stops. Time stops. So, ngayon, ako ay isang Cebuano. Original na Cebuano. Kasi tubong Cebu. Kaya, di ba? And, uh, but, uh, napunta na po ako ngayon sa Luzon since 2006. Doon na po yung ministry namin. Uh, for 18 years na doon. Nandun na po ako din una sa Manila. Then, we moved to Lipa in 2017, and I am now part of a People for His Name Baptist Church, Lipa City, Batangas. Kami yung taga totoong may alae. Kasi kayo dito may alae. Uh, hindi ko alam kung sino nag-invento niya. Baka batanggan niya. Ka-invento. Alae, hindi ako. <laughs> so, meron dyan. Tuwang-tuwa kami na daanan namin yung alae. Nung una pa. So this is a friend church, I mean. That's our comrade there, Pastor Raul Flor. Thank you for inviting us. We love this church. We love their people. They've been uh, going to our place for many, many, uh, many, uh, quite years na din. Mga since, siguro for five years na po mga kapatid. Since 2019, nagpupuntahan na yan sila doon. At dito din, since 2018, I've been here. At sa biyaya din ng Panginoon. So, yun po yung ating ano po mga kapatid. Gagawin ngayong araw na ito. Makinig lang kayo ng salita ng Diyos. Enjoy lang natin ang bawat sandali ng salita ng Diyos na matutunan po natin. Ready to learn na po tayo? Amen. Amen. Very good. That's good. And I hope na we'll trust the Lord na may maipakain siya sa atin ngayon. So, ano lang ako ha? Mix lang ako. Kasi, um, nung niabot ko Manila, Pwerteng gahiag yun akong tinagalugan. Hangtod ka rong gahit gihapon. Pag abot ko niya, na-preach ko kwarta. Ang akong, akong pera ay pira. Pwerteng gahiag yun. Katawaan na po ko nila. Pero pag magbisaya sila, katawaan po nato sila, ha? Uh, pero looy man kay sila, kung mag-istorya ko straight nga bisaya, daghana, na'y taga Baguio diri, na'y taga Santiago City diri, na ay taga, ano diri, na ay taga, sa pa, taga Rizal diri. Mga katagalugan ng uban, mga Ilocano, dagang kayo. Luoy, kay sila. Alangan mo lang ato silang libakon. Niingon si Pablo, nga mas maayo gayong lima raka words akong istorya, niya na, nasabta nila. Di ba? O kaysa daghan na kay kong istorya, nga puro binisaya, wala man sila kasabot. So atong haluon, na karon na, na, na tuyok na ilang mata sa usaon. Nagtuyok na kasi wawad sila kasabot. Kung sa akong istorya, kaluoy sa mga kailukanuhan dito sa taga, sa, taga Isabela, taga Santiago. Ganyan na lang sila. Ano yun? Kay, baka na, kakatawan na yun kay nikatawa man sila. So, atong imix. Okay lang, Pastor? Amen. Pero ang sa tinood lang, uh, lisod po, tudloog ka ng kuan. Uh, pag na, na, nakadigto, one time, kuyog ni Namo, si Pastor Cesar, then, ab abot may bukid. Bukid sa kab kaburan, kabanglasan, sa, sa Jose Abad Santos, sa mga, mga anong tribe nun? Bilaan ng mga tribe. Inaani ka na ka mong whiteboard, oh. Or maano ba to? Nagtudlo ko, rightly dividing, pinisaya, timeline. Ah, purte. Ay, three weeks man ko ato do sa, ano, three weeks ako nun. Na, Tagalogin ko na pala. Three weeks ako nun dito, kaya day one, day two, medyo adjustment. 
Araw-araw yun, may mga activities kami. Pero pag naabot o ka ng mga one week, ah, nakalimot na tinagalog. Ah. <laughs> Nindot doon pa kayo paminahon. Amen! So, okay, so mix lang natin. But usually, nasa English po ang atong ang ating ano ang ating instructions dito at ang ating uh, mga points but um we have good i have good news sa inyo uh, i've written by the grace of god yung booklet and compilations of lesson i have it i yung workman's treasure study series and uh, kung hindi ko din tinanggalan yung ilang topic it would be nine nine series parang handbook siya compiled ng work natin for many many years tapos pinabigay natin sa mga mga pastors around 500 to 600 pages ganun pero ang ang kagandahan ay English kasi yon kagandahan Ma- naatay meron tayong isang translator dito na bago kong discover na may gift siya of translation Amen. si Pastor Raul Flor Amen. kinuha niya yung four topics na yon at translate niya Amen. Amen. na tayong first time si Buano na rightly dividing Yung dispensational study guide natin was translated doon. Kaya dapat, sabi ko kay Brother Paul, baguhin dapat yun. Uh, translated by, dapat nandun ang ano. Kasi work niya yun. Hindi ko alam kung how many months. Gulat na lang ako. Sabi niya, Evangelist, mahayok kong permission be. Sabi niya, hindi ako permission. Pwede bang i-translate ng iyong ano, ang work mas treasure natin? Sabi ko, basta para sa ginoo, pastor. Wa mo kay baw, hindi ko alam na seryosohin pala niya. <laughs> Sineryoso niya, he translated for. Meron diyan dala ko pastor. Kasi request niyo po 'yon by the grace of God, meron tayo diyan. So, uh, uh, pag may resources tayo, mag-produce pa tayo, pero hindi hindi ko pa na proofread yung ilan dun ha. Isa lang, pero na ano ako, na bless ako. Pero yung tatlo dun, hindi ko alam kasi hinahabol ni Barpo, tagal nakaabot sa akin eh. At besides, I'm too busy to ano, pero makikita natin sa sunod. So, first edition lang yun. We'll have some refining at madagdagan pa yan later on. So, that's something. No? Ang topic dun is about dispensational study guide. Yung full details ng ating kasi primer lang to. Ibig sabihin, introduction lang to sa rightly dividing. Kasi, I have videos in YouTube Na, nasa ano pa lang ako, nasa earthly ministry ni Jesus Christ and minimum of one and a half hour, you know that, it's around 70 videos ng rightly dividing lang. So, detailed yun, pagkasunod-sunod yun. Pero malayo pa, nandun pa ako sa earthly. Hindi na ako nag-work mas treasure because of my schedule, hindi na ako naka-upload doon. Pero, i- ang gusto ko lang i-point out mga kapatid, this is a very, very huge subject. This is a whole system of biblical Bible study na gusto kong ma- malaman natin. Okay? Kaya ito sa atin, primer lang, patikim lang talaga. Not deep, but enough na makakuha tayo ng basics and enough na makatayo tayo ng pundasyon. So, meron yun sa booklet na, na naibigay ni Pastor, ay na-translate ni Pastor. Meron din yung about sa salvation. At yung pangatlo, ano yung isa? Ano na pa na-translate mo? Christ in the heart of the earth. Ano pa? The battlefield of the mind. Oh, Bira, paborito talaga niyang battlefield of the mind. That's a good, good preaching ano naman. Uh, 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 series na para sa bat isa. Anyway, let's go on ahead po mga kapatid. Let's go directly. The flash po tayo ngayon. Ha? So, so, si the flash po tayo ngayon. Uh, may mga times na bibilisan po natin. Now, under sa primer to ano primer to rightly dividing mayroon tayong four rudiments to understanding the bible pag sinasabi kong rudiments po mga kapatid anong ang by the way ang goal natin dito maintindihan ang biblia at ang biblia meron din siyang mga criteria kung papaano maintindihan ang biblia hindi criteria ng tao hindi criteria ng sino mang gumawa nito but ang dios ang naglay down din ng criteria Unless yung criteria na ito ay ma-meet, hindi mo maintindihan ang Biblia. Okay? I'll tell you as we go on later. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng rudiments? Apat, apat na bagay. So, four points tayo. So, ito yun. Kinuha ko lang to, Cut and paste ko lang to sa learn more about the word. So, word is rudimentary. 
is an adjective, ibig lang sabihin, basic. Ibig sabihin, fundamental. Or anything that is involving or limited to basic principles. Or being in the earliest stages of development. By the way, the word the rudiments is a Bible word. Rudiments of this world. It is used po mga kapatid twice or nakalimutan ko, hindi ko nabilang but it's in the Bible po mga kapatid. So, ibig lang sabihin, sabihin in a nutshell, pag sinabi mong rudiments or rudimentary, it means elementary things. So, sa nag-aaral tayo, baka preschool, elementary tayo, these are the first things. Kung iba, kung sa language at kung sa grammar or kung sa speech or kung sa writing, ito yung ABCs natin. Okay. Now, kung na-fascinate kayo sa basic, basic pa rin. Baka ang iba sa kanila, this is in-depth, malalim, pero this is basic. Paunahan ko na kayo, this is basic. Okay? So, yun po, four rudiments to understanding. So, there are four basic things na maintindihan natin ang Biblia. And this is God's criteria. Una, let's start with itong apat na ito po mga kapatid, ay we will consider the student. Bibigay ko sa inyo yung outline. Number two, we are to consider the scripture. Madali niyong intindihin ito at matandaan kasi naka-S po ito lahat. Number four, ay number three, you have to look at the study and you have to look at the, the secret. Okay, ano tong secret? Secret nga eh. So, let's not uncover it until pagdating natin doon. So, ito yung mga apat na bagay that I would discuss. We have to consider the student, the scripture, the study, the secret. Once na ma-attain ma, ma natin itong mga bagay na ito, uh, you, will un you will know that ang Biblia pala ay talagang uh, hindi kagaya na sinasabi ng iba na makabuang. Ay sabi dito sa atin, di ba? Ayong basa ng Bible ay eh, kayo makabuang. Makabuang yun, tinood, kung di ka mukaon. Kaon, sad. Kung in case man, bro, na mabuang, kaon, gihapon. Kasi para kung mabuang man, kusgan, sabi niya. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, dugay na akong mga bisaya, no? mga karaan, na kaya mga joke na maalagod ko kasabot. Eh. Kasi di man ko naturally joker, no? Sa mga taga-diha, no, di kayo mong kakitaan, you need this lesson, I suggest na dito mo, no? Kita ba diha sa likod? Okay, good. So, uh, let's start with mga itong sa apat na bagay na ito. Unahin natin, let's, let, mag-umpisa po tayo dito sa the student. Bakit? Kasi tayo lahat Bible student eh. Kahit pastor ka pa, lahat tayo Bible student. At i-consider natin, una, Bago siya magtuon, i-consider po nato nga example. Mag mag magtudlo ka og sa bata og reading. Asya say magtudlo ka sa bata og reading. I-consider mo ang bata, magtudlo ka reading sa bata 6 months old. Di pa ngay kasturya. Di pa ka pronounce. So ibig sabihin unqualified. Tama ba? I-consider mo I-consider mo yung learning niya, ang tawag natin, level of comprehension niya. So, I've been in academy in my early years po, mga kapatid. I've been attending seminars, lalo kasi nasa ano po ko, School of Tomorrow. Dati po, mga kapatid. So, we have some terms and we have some assessments and tawag nito, diagnostics. Ida-diagnose namin ang bata bago siya papasok sa level po na yan. Alam niyo kung bakit? Dahil pag didiretso siya, mag-jumpstart siya, nako, mahirap. Dapat under sa kan ang, kanyang, ang kanyang level should be also not only yung kanyang chronological level according to age. Chronological level means pag 7 years old ka sa atin, grade 1 ka dapat. Pero hindi yun ang ina-assess namin eh. Pwedeng, seven, uh, pwedeng 10 years old ka, pero ang tawag natin is yung level of comprehension mo ay pang, pang grade 1. So, we have to assess that. Kaya, may mga grade 4, pag i-assess namin, ang level niya grade 1 lang, kaya ang tawag doon learning gaps. May mga learning gaps. Dapat ma-meet niya until maka-attend siya sa level of comprehension na walang gaps. Kasi, mahihirapan siya. Kasi, building blocks ang knowledge. Hindi ka pwedeng didiretso. Example, magturo ako sa inyo ng ano, magturo sa agad ako sa inyo ng algebra na hindi niyo alam ang arithmetic. 
Nakuha po natin. Pero ito, ang Biblia po, enjoyable. Sabi ni Mark Twain, the Bible is just like a bubble gum. Na the more mo siyang chinichew, sumasarap. Na hindi mo pwedeng iswallow. Talagang ichew mo talaga siya. Kasi the more kang maintindihan mo, ma-appreciate mo ang truth niya. Kaya doon na, it's really, ang taste niya is just like a sweet honey. Sweeter than the honeycomb. And sabi, these are not just expression, but these are real po mga kapatid. Pero pag hindi mo maintindihan, parang burden sa'yo. Kala mo religious. Bakit? Hindi mo ma-appreciate, parang nakikita mo darkness. How could you appreciate reading when you don't know how to read? How could you appreciate singing when you don't know the tune? Tama? The same true sa Word of God. So, i-consider natin ang number one factor. Qualified bang estudyante? Okay bang estudyante? Kamusta tayo? But hindi pa rin na ayos? But hindi mo naintindihan? Very plain, very simple. Bakit hindi mo pa rin naintindihan? I-consider mo yung estudyante. Tama? So, yun po yung una nating wait na ipoprove po mga kabatid. There are things to remember na makikita po natin, una po mga kabatid, when we study, ang tandaan natin, ang pinag-aralan natin, hindi textbook, hindi encyclopedia, we're studying the Bible, the Word of God. Sabi niya, the Bible is our textbook. That's not, that's not, ano? That's not, ang tawag nito, that's not an accurate statement. The Bible is not a textbook. This is God's word. And this is authority. Textbook, ano, reference mo lang. And you have some options whether i-apply mo o hindi. Hindi ganun. It's an authority. So, dito po mga kapatid, my things to remember about the word of God at, at about the one who studied the word of God. Quickly, number one, the Bible is a sealed book. I'll go to that later on. Number two, man's sin cast a shadow which darkens his understanding. So there's the Bible. Ang problema, ang Bible, may silyo. Tapos, ang problema pa, ang taong nagbabasa nito, hello, makasalanan. Tama? At yung kasalanan niya, yun ang nagdadarken. Yun ang nagbibigay ng kadiliman Okay, or yun ang nagbibigay ng kangit-ngit. Ah, ganda, kanindot pa minaw. Kangit-ngit. <laughs> Kadiliman sa kanyang pag pagintindi. So, yun ang dilemma. Now, next po mga kapatid, ay man's finest mind cannot penetrate the deep dark shadow. Kahit yung pinaka-bright, kahit yung pinaka-matalino, kahit yung pinaka-edukado, hindi niya kaya. There is nothing po mga kapatid na kaya yun, mga, ang bagay nila. And also, the shadow of sin darkens the heart. So, ang problema, itong sin na ito, it darkens the very, very part of man kung asa or kung saan ang understanding manggagaling. At saan manggagaling ang understanding, we will discover it later on. It is coming from the heart. At ang inataki ng sin na nagbibigay ng kadiliman is yung puso mismo. Kaya hindi siya magbibigay talaga ng liwanag not until mag-get rid yung problem of the heart. Amen. Yan ang, ang lalim. Pero the good thing is, may paraan doon, Jesus Christ is the way of understanding the Scripture. Amen. Hindi tayo hinayaan ng Panginoon na sadyang ganun na lang Bahala ka na, na tinapunan ka na lang ng libro. Oh, here's the book. Read it! Kaya nga sabi ng, sabi ng mga wise men, sabi, na, sabi ng Ethiopian eunuch, nung sinabi ni Philip, Understand this, what thou, understand this thou, what thou readest? In Acts chapter number 8, ang sagot ng, Philippian, ay, uh, ng Ethiopian eunuch, sabi niya, How can I, except some men should guide me? Sabi doon, binigyan ni Isaiah ang mga learned men doon. Later on, mabasa natin. Oh, here's the book! Read it! Sabi niya, sabi ng mga learned men, How can I? For it is sealed. I cannot, for it is sealed. But glory to God, hindi lang tayo binigyan po ng libro na mahirap intindihin or hindi maintindihan, 
Pero binigyan tayo ng libro at binigyan tayo ng solusyon kung papaano ito maintindihan. So may mga brethren pa tayong dumating, no? And they'll just go ahead na punta dito. Now, tama lang tayo sa ating lesson. Now, let's go one by one dito po. Una, the Bible is a sealed book. May mga verses lang. Hindi ko na i-elaborate much. The Bible is a sealed book. So, the Bible says in Isaiah 29, verse 10 to 11, the Bible says, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. Then, continue, And the vision of all is, Become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this! Sabi niya, I pray thee! Ang sagot ng learned men, ang sagot ng edukadong tao, sabi niya, and he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. Yun ang gap, mga kapatid. I'd like, you to, I'd like to say this, and I said this many, many times. I could not count kung ilang beses, kung ilang conferences, but I used to say this, mga kapatid, that some people would say na ang Biblia ay mahirap intindihin. Okay? Let's just wait for the others. Okay? Some people say, that the Bible is hard to understand. Do you agree that the Bible is hard to understand? That's a very famous statement na sasabihin nila that the Bible is hard to understand. Hello? Yun ang karamihan. Ay, hindi ako magbasa ng Biblia kasi hindi naman ako edukado. Hihirap intindihin yun. Wala naman akong pinag-aralan. Wala naman akong mga natutunan masyado. Hindi naman ako first honor. Sabi nila, di ba? Gr ano naman ako? Tawag nito, namiyabas raman ko. Kaya itong klase mi sa una, namiyabas raman ko, niya, papailisdan akong papel. Di ba? May trabaho na to sa una. O, oh, di ba? Pero, or school bukol, cutting raman ko. No, no. So, so, that's why some people would say the Bible is hard to understand. But let me break that statement, mga kabatid. I'll say this. The Bible is not hard to understand. It is not hard to understand. Hello? It is impossible to understand. Ulitin ko yung statement ko, i-qualify ko quickly. The Bible is not hard to understand, but it is impossible to understand. Kasi, brethren, kung ang Biblia mahirap lang intindihin, edi ang mga doktor at mga scientist at ang mga educate, educators at mga learned man lang at mga wise man lang ang makaintindi dito. Paano tayo? Paano tayong grade 1 lang ang inabot ko? No read, no write pa ako. Paano na ngayon ang buhay ko? Talagang patay. Patay ang naglason talaga. Minsan, ganun tayo. Kaya ganito na lang ako, isang kahig, isang tuka, kasi grade 1 lang ang inabot ko. Eh, grade 6 lang ang inabot ko. O high school lang inabot ko, o kahit college ka, pag hard to understand, except na sobra mong matalino. So, kung ganun ang Biblia, ibig sabihin, ang mga bright lang ang makaintindi. Mga matatalino lang may tindi. Paano na lang ako? I'll tell you po mga kapatid, hindi naman sa pagmamayabang, no? But I'll tell you, six college courses meron ako. <laughs> <laughs> Kayo, isa-isa lang eh. Ako, anim. <laughs> okay? Pero, hindi pa ako tapos ha, kasi sabi ko, hindi pagmamayabang to eh. Pero sa anim na kurso na yun, ni isa, walang tinapos. <laughs> Puro simula. Puro simula. Ang last ko, fourth year, pero hindi ko pa pinasukan kasi sabi ko, magkasawa na ako. Ayaw ko na. <laughs> Uh, the point of saying that is, mga kapatid, paano na lang ako? Paano na lang tayo? Eh, bakit mo naintindihan yan? Hindi naman dahil matalino ako eh. 
Dahil nakatanggap ako ng tulong. Beyond myself. How can I? Sabi no, it is sealed. Ahit ano pang basa mo, wala, wala kang nakikita. Hindi mo nga mabuksan eh. Learned na ang nagsabi niya. When you say learned, they're the wisest people in their times, mga kabadet. Sabi niya, read this. Sabi niya, I cannot, for it is sealed. So yun po yung problema po, mga kabadet. Gusto natin makikita. So it's not hard to understand. It's impossible to understand. Unless, mga kabadet, mamit natin yung criteria ng Diyos o requirement ng Diyos kung papaano maintindihan ang salita ng Diyos. Ibig ko lang sabihin, hanggat hindi natin mamit yun, you can never understand. So, meron dapat siyang nire-require sa atin para maintindihan natin ang Biblia. Okay? Next, ano pa? Not only the Bible is a, is a sealed book, man's sin cast shadow which darken his understanding of each verse. Oh, anong, anong meron? Anong sabi ng Bible? Revelation 5.2. Do you remember that statement po, mga kapatid? In Revelation chapter number 5, there's a scene doon sa Revelation chapter 5, nakakita si John ng libro na may seven seals. Tapos nagtanong siya, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof? Yun ang tanong niya. Yun ang tanong niya po, mga kapatid. There was silence in heaven. If you read the, the Bible po, mga kapatid, he looked for the angels, wala. He looked for the, anybody, the elders, wala. Then, sabi niya, no man was found worthy to open and to read and to lose the seal thereof. Yun ang problema. That, that's why sa sina yun, nalungkot si John, umiyak siya. Paano ko malaman to? Kasi sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanya, okay, the things that thou sowest right, Kasi talaga, ah, paano ko may sulat kung hindi ko naman makita? Kaya nalungkot siya that time because no man, no angels could do that. Tapos may angel na biglang, biglang lumapit sa kanya, weep not, John, for the lion of the tribe of Judah is worthy to read the book and to open the seal thereof. So, will not go. Ang point ko lang po, mga kapatid, no man is found worthy. You know why no man is found worthy? Dahil makasalanan. At yung kasal makasalanan niya, anong sabi ng Bible? It separates him between you and your God. If he, uh, Isaiah 59 po mga kapatid. Anyway, mamaya or tingnan natin. So, in Psalm 14 verses 2 to 4, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men. Look at, to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. So, naghanap ng Diyos kung may nakakaintindi ba. And, anong sabi ng Bible? They're all gone aside. They're all together become filthy and have all workers of iniquity, no knowledge. You see? Nakita nyo yung filthy, gone, none of them can understand. They're filthy, they're workers of iniquity, and kaki but no, no knowledge. So, what hinder it? Knowledge and understanding. Iniquity. Sins. And yun ang nagka-cast shadow. Ano pa po mga kapatid? Tang tanggalin ko nga itong may mga net pala. Nakaano ang net ko. Yan. So, next po mga kapatid. John 8. Uy, bakit ganun? Oh, yan. John 8, 43 to 44. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, Why do you not understand my speech? Di ba? Then, if you read verse 44, sinortcut ko na lang, because ye are of your father, the devil. Kaya sabi niya, if you are of God, you should have understand me. Bakit gan ganyan kayo? Because ye are of your father, the devil. So what hinders understanding? May, may, may ano, pastor? May kailangang ma-break, may kailangang maayos sa tao. Daniel 12.10, sa Bible says, none of the wicked shall understand. Ano pa? Proverbs 14.6 A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Bakit ganon? May sin of scorning. Merong ano, problema po mga kapatid sa kanyang puso, at kanyang attitude. Kahit anong basa niya, he could never and will never understand. Psalm 82 verse 4 to 5 The wicked, they know not, neither will they understand. So yun ang problema. The wicked will not understand. Psalm 92 verse 6, A brutish man knoweth not, neither that, a, a, neither that a fool understand this. 
So a brutish knoweth not, then a fool understand not understand this. Now, anong common ground sa brutish and a fool? They rejected God. Amen. And they're sinners. Okay? Kaya walang understanding. Proverbs 28 verse 5, Evil men understand not judgment. You see, understanding, tapos nandun yung wickedness. Evil men understand not judgment. John 8, 2, verse 3, and John 10, verse 6, the people in verse number 2, they're the scribes, they're the Pharisees. The Pharisees, anong sabi ng Bible? They understood not what the things they were, which He spake unto them. Bakit hindi na intindihan? Anong meron sa, anong meron sa mga Pariseo? Hipokrito! Yun ang kasalanan ng sin of hypocrisy. And it shuts understanding. It shuts knowledge po, mga kabadet. Psalm 94 verse 8, Understand, ye brutish among the people, ye fools, when will ye be wise? Ano pa sabi? Next, number three, Even man's mind cannot penetrate the deep, the dark shadow which blackens the book. Dito ko papakita sa inyo, kahit pinaka-bright, Walang magagawa. Kaya sabi ko, impossible to understand. Kahit pinakamatalino ka, kahit ka-IQ mo pa si Einstein, pag if you are left alone without God's help and without meeting God's criteria, kung unsaon, pagsabot na to sa Biblia, walang hope. You're hopeless when it comes to understanding. Ano sabi sa Biblia? Isaiah 29 verse 14, For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. In 1 Corinthians 1.19, for it is written, I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Kahit anong manggagawa, mga prudent, mga matatalinong tao, mga wise men, ano magagawa nila? It shall be hid. Okay, not until they will meet God's criteria on how to understand the Word of God, it shall be hid. 1 Corinthians 2.14, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, neither can he know them. Bakit? Because they are spiritually discerned. Bakit hindi maintindihan ng natural man ang salita ng Diyos? Because the only way to understand the Word of God is to spiritually discern. Ang problema sa natural man is dead spiritually, separated from God. Because of sin. At wala siyang capacity to spiritually discern. Therefore, understanding is shut up sa kanila. Kuha po natin. Kahit pinakamatalino ka, pag natural man ka, sorry. Kaya, pag understanding sa Biblia, dili ni pa brightay. Pag sabot na to sa Biblia, di po ni pa dugayay sa ministry. Gracia regiaponis gino. Ito na maintindihan natin. Amen. Amen. So the shadow is shaped like the profile of a heart that is jugged with sin. Think of a heart tapos nandun na cover ang sin. And why that matters po mga kapatid itong mga bagay na ito? Bakit ano bang meron sa heart? Ephesians 4:17 verse uh, 18 then. Walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened because of the blindness of their heart. Now, pansin niyo ha, the understanding of an unsaved is dark. Bakit? Saan ba nang gagaling ang understanding? From the heart. Bakit? Because there is his heart. Anong sabi dito? Because of the blindness of their heart. Pag blind ang heart, blind, wala ka ding understanding. I, I'll say this. Let me submit to you, brethren, that the organ and the part of men where understanding spring forth is the heart. At doon ang corruption, doon ang problema, may virus na nag-cover. At pag hindi, pag hindi matanggal yun po mga kapatid, parang wala siyang pag-function sa pag-intindi, lalo na sa salita ng Diyos. Naintindihan po natin? So that heart should be regenerated. That heart should be changed. That something that covers the heart should be dealt with and get rid and be removed. Oh, mga kabalit. Okay? So, Acts 28 verse 26 to 27. Sabi daw, Ye shall hear and shall not understand. For the heart of these people is wax gross, lest they should 
understand with their heart. So saan galing ang understanding? Heart. Po mga kapatid. Hindi ka nagintindi sa muso, ha? Sa puso. Mamaya i-deal natin as we go sa as we go sa ano. Lahat itong sistema out of the heart talaga. It is always the heart issue. Even in salvation, it's not the mouth issue, it's the heart issue. Ma-discuss natin yun dito po mga kapatid. And uh, stay tuned hanggang bukas. And we'll talk about some of those things, no? Kaya yun ang problema, mga kapatid. Next, Proverbs 8:5. Ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hello. Kaya saan ang understanding? From the heart. Next, Job 17:4. Thou hast hid their heart from understanding. That's a Bible words, mga kapatid. These are Bible terms. Wala tayong ginamit na cliches or sulat ng tao, pinakita ko lang sa inyo na ito yung organ na pinanggalingan kung saan tayo. Pero kung may problema yan, may problema ang yan. Compromise lahat ang understanding, lalo na. Ano pa? Isaiah 44, to 20. They have not known nor understand, for He hath shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their heart that they cannot understand. Bakit? Anong meron sila? A deceived heart had turned Him aside. So their sin, it's a deceived heart. At pag deceive heart, talagang kahit anong pang preach mo dyan. At anong wag niya. Ha? Ganun. Wala lang. Mga kapatid, kung ikaw ay nag-ikot-ikot pa ang puso mo, hindi ko naman appreciate yan. Ano bang meron dyan? So wala. You have to examine yourself. May problema ata ako ah. Parang walang dating sa akin to. May problema ata ako. Be honest about yourself. Sige, let's, let's just move on. Luke 18.34 And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them. So may sinabi ang Panginoong Yesus, ano na to, disciples na to. But this saying was hid from them. Job 28 verse 22 to 21, Where is the place of understanding? Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all the living. So that's the question now. Ngayon, kung gan, may problema tayo, where is the place of understanding? Kasi parang tinago ng Diyos eh, in the eyes of the living. That's the question po mga kapatid. So, There is a way of understanding the Bible. Kasi, ang tanong kanina, where is the way to understanding? But there is the way to understanding the Bible. Jesus is still the way to understanding the Bible. Let's start there. When He said, I am the way, it's not just the way going to heaven, it is also the way to understanding. I'll tell you later on as we go on. And it's Jesus Christ po mga kabadid. You try to read the Bible without Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. You try to understand the Bible and learn it on your own apart from Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. You have, hello, denied yourself from the key to knowledge and the key to understanding. And that is Jesus Christ. That is the Lord. So with that, the preface ng ating King James hindi ko alam kung meron kayong ano po, translators to the reader. Itong Bible ko na ito, merong translator to the readers. Meron po dito itong translators to King James. Ano ba itong translators to the readers? Notes nila, parang love letter nila. Pag every time basahin mo ang King James Bible, ito yung mga paalala nila. Ito yung mga sinasabi yung heart nila. At yung translators to King James, letter nila to King James na nag-authorize sa kanila na i-translate yung book. Usually, nasa mga Oxford, Cambridge na mga old, hindi local print, para imported print po mga kapatid. Uh, maganda, babasahin mo. But let me quote, kinuha ko lang to sa preface to the, KJ, the KJV says. Ito yung quote nila. He removed the scales from our eyes and the veil from our hearts, opening our wits that we may understand His word. Precious thoughts na sinasabi ng di, ito yung ang nagsasabi dito po mga kapatid ang mga nagsasabi nito na wala tayong King James Bible not until the Lord removed the scales of our eyes yung eyes of their understanding the veil of our hearts yung sin na nakaveil opening our wits which means yung knowledge sabi niya that we may understand this word mga kapatid ang nagsasabi nito, I'd like you to understand, they were called as the walking dictionary. 
One of them were called as the walking library. One of them were called as the third world university. Isang tao, parang universidad na. They learn Greek and Hebrew eloquently, ride illegibly, read eloquently, speak eloquently at the age of five years old. I'm just giving you their educational background. Kung may King James Conference tayo sa mga susunod na, I'll tell you all of that. I have 60 plus videos in YouTube dedicated for that. Minimum of one and a half hour to two hours. And I have detailed everything and I have written a little bit on that sa ating booklet. They went to universities at the age of 13 not to study Hebrew and Greek but to be professors of Hebrew and Greek. They did not study for one semester two, then doctor, doctor ka na, at didu doctor mo na ang Biblia. But they, that's their bread and butter. They read out since they're little from the Hebrew and from the Greek. And there's, they are the king's choice. And they're the best of the best in their kingdom. Hello. And so to say, none of our people in our generation could parallel. None. And we have documents on that. Wala pa. And yet, in their humility, they said, it was never us. It was never us. It was him who removed the scale from our eyes. It was never our educational attainment. It was never our own experience. It was never our own knowledge. It was Him, amen, who removed the veil from our eyes. It was Him who gave us wits and knowledge and understanding amen. that we might understand His Word. Even the finest men who have written and translated this book for 400 years now, it's still well-beloved. It's still well-embraced. Do you not know that BBC, I don't know if you have watched, I, I recommend this to watch. 2011 was the 400 years anniversary of the King James Bible. 1611 to 2011. Friend, thank you for giving me that. Ano, binigyan pa ako ni ni EJ na nandun ako talagang ginamit ko pang background sa broadcast ko yan EJ ngayon tinanggal ko kasi dahil may natutulog dun pinabad na ako ibalik ulit <laughs> pero I keep that so kung parang iano po ma mahal yun eh. dati natingin-tingin ako ng ganyan EJ kasi binenta yun noong 2011 eh. hanggang tingin lang ako eh kasi yung mga time na yun ay hindi tayo maka-afford Hanggang ngayon. Opo. <laughs> now, uh, noong 2011 na yon, nag-release ang BBC. You know, BBC is anti-God. They're anti-Bible. They're, they're, they're not Christian, ano, Christian uh, parang station or Christian, ano bang tawag yan, program or something. They're not. They're not. They're unbelievers, so to say. Minsan, nagtuturo sila doon ng mga evolutions. Nagaganon sila. Pero, they're known of their documentaries. Hello? They're known of their documentaries. And, and mind you, nag-release sila ng 2011 at ang title po ng documentary films around one, one and a half hour. It's a very, very good documentary. Ibig ko lang sabihin, walang bias. Hindi Christian ang nag-produce. Silang nag-produce. Because, of the undeniable contribution of this book. You know what was the title of the documentary film? You watched it. You may download sa YouTube or not. It is old but it's gold. It's more than 10 years now. It's old but it's gold. What I'm saying is the title that's yung book na yun is The Book That Changed the World. Produced by Unbelievers. 
acknowledging its literary contribution from a perspective of unbeliever. The book that changed the world. It's the story of the King James Bible. Amen. How it was brought. How it was translated. And they acknowledge the providences of God in that time. It's good, good. It can help you. Mga kapatid. So anyway, di ko na, ano kasi, wala na, dam, ubus na tayo. Kasi pag tayong, ako mag ano, minsan, wawala ako eh. Sige. Oh, take, sige lang, okay lang. Sabi ko, quality instead of quantity. Okay? Next, Revelation 5 verse 2, 4 and 5 and 9. Sabi niya, weep not. Di ba, umiyak si John. Sabi niya, behold, meron pa rin. Kung seal man yung book na yon, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David had prevailed to open the book. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to God by thy blood. So, ang sinabi niya, si Jesus Christ pa rin ang sagot kung paano maintindihan ang Biblia. And Proverbs 9.6, Go in the way of understanding. Inutusan ka saan ang, ang daan papuntang understanding. Go to the way. Ang sagot, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. Amen. So, God and Christ is still the way to understanding. If you cannot understand the Bible, look to God, not to anywhere else. <laughs> Don't look to the system of men. Look to God. Amen. So, Proverbs 21, verse 16, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Yun ang problema. Kung hindi ka pupunta doon sa way of understanding and you create your own way, you will remain in the congregation of the dead. Ibig sabihin, you will be part of a religion of unsaved people po, mga kapatid. In Mark 7, 14, sabi ni Jesus Christ sa mga tao, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Why? He is the way to understand. Mga kapatid. Sabi niya, Luke 24, 45, and then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. The context of that, the two disciples in the road of Emmaus, ano bang nangyayari yun? Then binuksan ni Jesus Christ ang kanilang understanding. Then ano nangyayari? They understand the scripture. Who's the way to understand it? It's not man. It's not system of men. It's still Jesus Christ po mga kapatid. 1 John 5.20 And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding po mga kapatid. Amen! Ano pa po mga kapatid? In, in Colossians 2.2 2, In whom are hid It's Jesus Christ in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Psalm 147 verse 5 Great is our Lord and of great power His understanding is infinite. Job 12.13 He hath counsel and understanding. Job 38 verse 36 Who hath given understanding to the heart? That's the question. Who hath given understanding to the heart? Is it me? Is it the teachers? Is it, is it some good Bible preachers? Thank God for them. But are they the one who give understanding? That's the question. The answer of God, Job 32 verse 8, The Almighty giveth them understanding. The answer of God is 1 Chronicles 22, 12, Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding. And 2 Timothy 2, 7, The Lord give thee understanding in all things. And 1 Chronicles 28 verse 19, The Lord made me to understand. Exodus 36, 1, Every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding. Kita niyo po natin? 1 Kings 3, verse 12, I, God said, given thee a wise and understanding heart. Sino nagsabi niyan? Ang Diyos, sinong sinabi yan? Si Solomon. Amen. Daniel 1, 17 and 18, God gave them knowledge and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And 1 Kings 4.12, And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceedingly much and largeness of heart po, mga kapatid. So, yun ang point na gusto kong ipapakita sa inyo. Now, sulit na ang Bible conference natin. Kasi may mga Bible conferences, isang verse lang, dalawang oras, isa. Diba? O, tapos na tayo, okay na. 
Introduction pa lang yun, uy. Wala pa tayo, sa student pa tayo, uy. So, dapat ma-consider natin yung sudyante. Bakit, mga kabatid? Ito na yun, oh. ito na yung pinag-usapan natin. Dapat ma-consider ng isudyante yun. Ito yung pinaka-outline na dinil natin kanina. Mga kabatid. Now, God required only one thing to understand His Word. Brad, past EJ, binago ko na yun ang thing nga. Baka i-critic na naman to eh. Nung nag-post ka, ginawa ko daw ang tool. Kasi God, ang supposedly, God required only one tool to, un to understand to understand His Word. Oh. Alam mo naman natin eh, kasi may, kailangan mo talaga ng tool to understand eh. Siyempre, yun ang point eh. Pero ito lang po, or tool or one thing, para maintindihan ng, ta naintindihan ng tao ang salita ng Diyos. And that is it. That is the Holy Spirit. Ibig sabihin, matalino ka na, hindi ko naman kine-question yun eh. Magaling ka na, hindi ko naman kine-question yun eh. Edukado ka na. Hindi ko naman kini-question yun eh. Pero pag wala kang Holy Spirit, tapos ang laban. First honor ka. Magna cum laude ka. Glory to God. Praise God. By all means, do your best. Pero when it comes to this book, the first requirement na una mo dapat na imit ay mayroon ka dapat na Holy Spirit. Pero kung wala kang Holy Spirit, Goodbye, Philippines ka. Talagang makabuang. Kasi, ngano nagbuang man ka? Magbinisayas ako ka diyot sa mga Tagalog, ha? Ngano makabuang man? Kasi pugson man yung pagsabot, niya, huwag kay Holy Spirit, niya, huwag pag kaon-kaon, eh, ni, na ano ka? Masisiraan ka. Di ba? Di ba, sabi ko nga sa broadcast dati, ang common ground po ng mga ano, mga kulto, na nagpakita ang nagrebel ang Panginoon's common ground nila is nag-alone sila sa isang lugar, pumunta sila sa bundok or sa isang place na uh, sa, sila lang for many days nagme-meditate daw sila, hindi sila kumakain. Wala silang witness, wala silang kasama, sila sila lang. Tapos many days hindi sila kumakain, nagkipag-usap lang until narinig nila ang boses ng Panginoon. At sinabi nila, uh, sinabi daw ng Panginoon, gawin mo to, gawin mo to. Pagbaba nila sa bundok, nagtayo ng relihiyon. Huwag kayong maniwala doon. Gutom lang yun. <laughs> Gutom lang yun. Guni-guni lang yun. Huwag kang kumain na isang linggo. Sige, tingnan ba natin kung wala kang maririnig at makikita. Subukan nyo! <laughs> ganon din ang mangyayari. So, ganon. Yan ang common ground ng mga nag nagtayo ng reliyon. Mga kapatid, di natin. Holy Spirit. Pero ang problema, paano ka makakuha ng Holy Spirit? So we need to be confident we have God's Spirit. Kung gusto, na, sabi mong maintindihan mo ang salita ng Diyos, you have to be confident na I have the Holy Spirit in me. Can you say with all of your heart na I am confident that I have the Holy Spirit in me? Then that's the first requirement. Mga kabatid. So to have the Holy Spirit, how does one receive God's Spirit? May mga tao na, paano mo matanggap ang Holy Spirit? Ay, tinatanggap namin palagi ang Holy Spirit. Sabi nga ng kanta namin, Come Holy Spirit, I need you. Come Holy Spirit, I pray. Paano mo? Unsa mo yung pagdawat sa Holy Spirit? Sabi mo, come into my heart. Parang, parang ang pangutan na lang, unsa mo yung pagdawat si Kristo? Come into my heart. Invite Him into your heart. Ganun ba? Is that what the Bible says? Yan, yan bang sabi ng Biblia? ba? Diba? Kaya ang question ngayon, kasi ito ang issue eh. Para maintindihan mo ang Biblia, you've got to have the Holy Spirit. But ang question is, how? That's the challenge, how? Mga kapatid, next. How can I be sure that I have Him as my personal teacher? Kasi ang Holy Spirit, He will guide you into all things. He will teach you into all the truth. He is a teacher. He is the comforter coming from God. In in if we are in First Corinthians chapter number two verse number thirteen, it is the Holy Ghost that teacheth, not man's wisdom teacheth, but the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So when it comes to spiritual things, ang teacher natin ay hindi ako, ang Holy Spirit. Ang duty ko lang is ipakita ko lang sa inyo ang bersikulo. 
Tapos ang Holy Spirit, kung may Holy Spirit ka, siya yung nag, nagpaintindi sa iyo. Pero kung walang Holy Spirit ka, kahit gano'n ko pagagaling, di mo maintindihan. Do you acknowledge that He is the teacher? You should, mga kabadet. Kami, ano lang kami? Guide. We're just a guide to show them the verse, to show them the truth that they need to know and they need to believe. But the duty of conviction, the duty of understanding is not mine. It's the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, ngayon, nagbibigay lang ko ng verses, statements. It's still the Holy Spirit. I trust the Holy Spirit will take it to you. Kung may Holy Spirit kayo, madali lang intindihin, mga kapatid. Now, ngayon, Ephesians 1.13, this is a clear, hindi to detalye, bilisan lang to, kasi meron tayong whole lessons about these things, mga kapatid. Ephesians 1.13 po, mga kapatid, in verses 13 to 14, it details the order kung paano mo matanggap ang Holy Spirit. It is not according to tradition. These details, these verses detail the order of salvation. Anong sabi sa Ephesians 1.13? In whom ye trusted, if you have your Bibles with you, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, then ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And in verse 14, binigyan ka ng earnest of the inheritance of the purchased possession, and that is the Holy Spirit, yung down payment. So the moment you've got saved po mga kapatid, when you trusted the Bible, hindi mo sin- hindi sinabi ng Bible na invite the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. No, according to the Bible, when you believe the specific truth according to the gospel of your salvation, automatic na matanggap mo ang banal na espiritu. At once na matanggap ang na, sa iyo ang banal na espiritu, manirahan na siya, nasilyado ka na. Hindi yan aalis na every Sunday, i-invite mo na naman ulit. Ano? Sealed na yan. Anong sabi? First, you must hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Sabi doon, after ye heard, The word of truth. So there must be hearing of the word of God. There must be hearing of the word of truth, not hearing the words of men. Okay? When you witness to people, it should not be your illustration. It's not be your words. Yes, these are important. But the convicting power is coming from the word of God. The Holy Spirit will not use anything outside from His word. Guni-guni yun kung outside from His word. Don't ever say that is coming from the Holy Spirit kung wala sa Bible yun. So you need to hear the words, the gospel of your salvation, the good news. May magandang balita, may mayong balita para sa atong kaluwasan. At nasa Biblia yan, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 4, kung papaano si Kristo namatay. Amen para sa ating mga kasalanan. Sabi ng kasulatan, at kung paano siya inilibing at nabuhay muli, yun yung ibanghelyo. Sabi ni Paul, I declare to you the gospel. So you need to hear that. Wala pong naliligtas na, huy, nararamdaman ko ang Panginoon, kaya nasave ako. <laughs> na naginip ako at sumunod ako sa Panginoon sa panaginip ko at doon ako nasave, panaginip pa rin yun. Gumising ka. Hindi yung nararamdaman ko na nananlight tayo ang Holy Spirit, bumaba sa aking kamay. Nung bumaba sa aking kamay, gumalaw. Tapos bumaba sa aking hips, gumalaw. Kaya yun ang kanta, I have spirit in my hips that is keeping me alive. Diba? <laughs> Hindi ganyan. Hindi na. Sobra na yan, friend. Sobra na yan, friend. Ang punto, walang ganun. Walang sinatawag nating mga, ang tawag natin dito ay mga mysticism, mystical based on feelings, based on guni-guni, based on something na superstition po mga kapatid. Walang ganun. Pag mag-move ang Holy Spirit, it is straightforward and practical and it has evidence. Hindi yeah. na po natin? Dapat maintindihan po natin yun. So, you must first hear the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Ano pa? Then you must personally believe the truth. Ang paggagamit sa Bible, trust and believe. Sabi doon, in whom you have trusted. 
Pero paano ka nag-trust? After. So the order is after you heard the word of truth. So there must be hearing the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, then in whom also after that, after you heard, there's only one response. Pag narinig mo ang ebanghelyo ng magandang balita, there's only one response sa sabi ng Bible. In, in, all, in whom also after that ye believe. Pag sasabihan kita ng news, Hello? Pag sasabihan kita sa isang good news, anong response mo sa isang good news? Maniwala ka! Hello? Pag maniwala ka, may good news ako! Kung ibigay niyo yung Gcash number niyo, may papasok na pera! Sa mauna lang, kung alam niyo yung number ko, i-text niyo ako, hindi sa messenger, ha? Oh, may pera ka! Pag hindi ka maniwala, ah, wala na. Good news nga eh. So, paano mo, kano ka mag sa isang news, sa good news? Hindi ka na mag-respond mag, mag sa, talikuran ko itong mga bagay, ikot-ikot mo na ako. Or may sasabihin mo na ako. Brad, pogi ka. Ang gagawin mo? Good news yun. Tingin ka mo na sa salamin. <laughs> Mukha mo ka nga. <laughs> Nung no, nakarinig tayo ng balita na si President, okay, Bongbong or Ferdinand Marcos Jr. was the 17th, declared to be the 17th President of the Republic of the Philippines. Ano ginawa mo? After seeing the pools and all of this, ano ginawa mo? May ginawa ka bang ritual? May ginawa ka bang anything? Ano ginawa mo sa news? Okay, confirm. Your mind and your heart agrees with it. Based on the facts, na pinakita, your mind and your heart agrees with it. Oh, it's it. He is now my president. Ganun lang. Kasi yun ang sabi na, wala ka naman pwedeng idagdag dun eh. After that, he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that, he believed. Lahat ng nag, may preaching sa Bible, basahin mo sa book of Acts, ano ang ginawa nila after they heard the preaching? They believe. They believe. They believe. Hello. Kasi ang sinabi sa preaching, promise. Ang sinabi sa preaching that Christ died for you. He washed your sins away. He died and He was buried and rose again the third day so that He could give you forgiveness. So that He could bring you to heaven. So that He could justify you. Wala siyang pinapagawa sa iyo. Good news lang ang sinabi sa inyo. Pwede ka nang mapatawad ngayon ora mismo. So anong gagawin mo? Because Jesus Christ paid it all. Wow. You believe it with all your heart. Mga kapatid. Next, anong sabi? And that is when you receive the Holy Spirit, the seal of God, as the earnest of your heavenly inheritance. In whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, then ye were sealed. Hearing. So, preaching, hearing. Kasi kung walang mag-preach, paano mong pakinggan? Hindi pwede yung panaginip ang napakinggan mo, ha? Hindi pa, pa, pwede yung ibang voice ang napakinggan mo. There must be the preaching of the Word of God. So when, you, when, when there's a preacher, then you hear it. Then once you hear the good news, you believe it. Then the next, ano sabi? You're sealed. Salvation is not a, a process. Salvation is instantaneous. I'm talking of soul salvation. Ora mismo. In whom also after that you believe, then you were sealed. Alam mo yung sealed? That is a guarantee. Binigyan ka ng earnest. Alam mo ano ibig sabihin ng earnest? Down payment. Token. It's a guarantee payment. And that's the Holy Spirit na nahan sa atin. Hindi lang siya patunay na ikaw ay saved seal you din siya na ikaw ay forever saved. Save ka. At yun ang kailangan mo, mga kapatid. So, what is the gospel of your salvation that you must be heard, uh, you must heard, hear, and believe, po mga kapatid? Anong sagot? 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4, Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again. So, 
With that, why did Christ die for our sins? Yun ang tanong po mga kapatid. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Yun lang. Kasi bakit kailangan niyang mamatay? To take our place. Because someone has to die. Someone has to pay. And the payment is death. Even the Savior, amen, is not exempted. Bible says, He spared not His own Son. Because sin is sin. Sin must be dealt with. Sin must be punished. And sin must be paid for. He spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all. Bakit? He delivered Him up for us all. For He made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Si ginawa siyang kasalanan. Kaya hindi siya pwedeng mas spare. He has to be delivered to death. And that's why He has to die. And He has to die the death that I should die. Mga kapatid. So Romans 5.8, because Christ loved us. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 3.25, bakit siya namatay? To be the propitiation of our sins. You know what the word propitiation, if there is one word for propitiation, that's the word satisfaction. So, ibig sabihin, si Jesus Christ satisfy the Father. Jesus Christ's offering and work satisfy the Father. Ibig sabihin, may demand ang, ang Diyos. Ito yung demand ko para makapagbigay ako ng salvation. Someone has to die. It must be a spotless Lamb of God. Some, someone's blood should be shed. Amen. It has to be a perfect, complete payment. No one could do that. But His Son did it for me. Completed it for me. And the Son, after He rose from the dead, was fully satisfied on what He has done. Like the Father has fully been satisfied with what He has done. And Jesus Christ, according to Romans 3.25, uh, in whom God set forth to be a propitiation Amen. through faith in His blood. Sinet forth siya na bilang standard ng kanyang satisfaction na kung gusto mong masave, wala nang ibang hanapin na sacrifice ang Diyos. Wala nang ibang hanapin na work na pwedeng mag-satisfy sa kanya, nag-lulugbibigay lugod sa kanya, or nagpapasaya sa kanya, na wala nang siyang ibang hanapin, kundi yun lang. The rest will be rejected. You go ahead, be good. Go ahead, offer your religion, offer your life, but it would never be enough. None of it will be enough because Jesus Christ has already set forth. He's been the setting forth of the standards of what God satisfied the Father. Kung maghanap ka ng iba or dagdagan mo pa, the wrath of God will be upon you. There will be no salvation. Intindihan po natin? Ito po yung challenge kung ang Diyos Ama na satisfy sa ginawa ni Jesus Christ para sa kasalanan natin, ikaw, satisfy ka ba? Yabang ng mga tao, no? Ah, death, death burial, resurrection ni Kristo lang yun. Wala na tayong contribution. Wala na talaga. Gusto mo? Binigyan na nga tayo, eh. Alam mo, alam mo binigyan ka ng ano? Binigyan ka ng ng saan lang anak ko? David. David. Can you imagine, David, binigyan ka ng Lamborghini ni EJ? Worth 50 million? Sabi niya, David, sa'yo na to. I-claim mo mamaya, ha? Sa'yo na to. <laughs> Tapos sabi na, ha? Walang bayad? Okay na? Hindi, sa'yo na to. Pipilit mo pa rin. You are insulting the gracious acts of the giver. Amen. Parang, ah, ganun ba? Parang kulang yun. Kulang pa. Binigyan ka na, kulang pa. <laughs> so, mga kapatid, He is to be our propitiation in Romans 4.25 for our offenses and for our justification. 
Sabi ng Romans 4.25, For He was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Kung wala pong ano, wala pong, hindi po namatay, nilibing pangatlong araw na buhay ni Kristo muli, God could not justify anybody. Pero dahil may justification na ang available, anong ni-required ng Panginoon? Romans 4.5 to, uh, to him that worketh not, but believe it on him that justifieth the ungodly. Ang gagawin mo lang, you believe him that justifieth the ungodly. Who believe, uh, who justifieth the ungodly? God. Jesus Christ. You believe it. Then your faith is counted for righteousness. In Romans 3.26 po mga kapatid, it's very clear doon. To declare, I say at this time, sabi doon, Romans 3.26, His righteousness, that He might be just, sabi ng Bible, that God might be just and the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus. Ano na? God is the justifier to whom? Sabi ng Romans 8, it is God that, that justifieth. Ang Diyos ang nagtutubos. Ang Diyos ang nagdideclare kung sino ang matuwid. And it is God that justify it. And God is the justifier of whom? The justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Gusto mo ng justification? Ano requirement ng Panginoon? Faith. Believe. Hello? Simply, plain, simple. Pero kung, kung ikaw ay nabulag sa jablo, mahirap intindihin yan. At mga kapatid, I pray, kasi yun ang solution mo na mawala yung scale sa puso mo. Once maniwala ka, yun ang prerequisite na magkaroon ka ng Holy Spirit. Pag may Holy Spirit ka na, magkaintindihan tayo sa mga teachings ngayon. Yep. Tindihan po natin? Magkaintindihan po tayo. So with that po mga kapatid, so what is God's first requirement for understanding His Word? You have to acknowledge that you're a sinner and you cannot save yourself. You realize that payment must be made for your sins, that Jesus Christ paid the penalty for your sins with His blood on the cross. And rely, ito yung gagawin mo, exclusively on the death, burial, and resurrection. How do you rely? By believing, by trusting. Okay, exclusively. Rely on the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ as full and total payment for your sins as your only hope for eternal life. So, kung ikaw ay ginawa mo yun, you are saved. Once you have done this, God gave you His Holy Spirit to indwell in you and to help you to understand His Word. So, simply lang. Ang requirement ng student is Holy Spirit. And to have the Holy Spirit, you need to be saved. Without salvation, you cannot have the Holy Spirit. Question, are you saved? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Are you sure? Can you say, I am confident that I have the Holy Spirit? Amen. Kung wala, kung hindi ka confident, wag mong dayain sarili mo. Amen. Isipin mo na, o nga, paano ko ba natanggap ang Holy Spirit? Is it the Bible way? Or is it tra the traditional way? Kahit gaano katagal na yung tradition and tradition is tradition, it can never be truth. Is it how the Bible or is it what the Bible says on how I should receive the Spirit? Or is it yung tinuro ng tao at hindi? Be honest about it. Kasi ang criteria na mapunta sa yung Holy Spirit is salvation. Ang tanong, yung sinasabi mo bang kaligtasan, is it what really the Bible says? Or man-made yun na kaligtasan? Kung hindi sufficient ang ginawa ni Kristo sa iyo, at kailangan mo, bang tang, ta, kailangan mo pang dagdagan ng talikuran mo ang iyong mga kasalanan, ikumpisal mo ang iyong kasalanan, humingi ka ng kapatawaran ng kasalanan, hindi mo naintindihan ang Ebanghelyo, my friend. Because exactly the Bible deals with yours. The gospel, the Bible tells us that the gospel deals exactly sa ating mga kasalanan. The Bible tells us 
that in the gospel, God has done something for your sins. Not you doing something for your sins. When someone required you, kailangan mong talikuran ng iyong kasalanan, iwanan, at wag nang mag, ano, magkasala, ganito. But my friend, they're asking you to do something about your sins. But the Bible says, God did something for your sins. Kasi kung ganun pala, do something for your sin, anong saysay kung ba't namatay pa siya sa cross ng Kalbaryo? Para saan yun? Because that is the only way to deal your sins. Pero kung may iba kang paraan, that's another. That's not the biblical way on how to be saved. Yun lang point natin po, mga kapatid. So, ar- ang tanong, kung sa estudyante ba ba, enrolled ka na ba? Aral ka ng aral, hindi ka pala registered. Taas-taas mo, at the end of the day, wala ka pala sa class record. Parang ganun lang yun. Ang, ang bait-bait mong tao, dami mong tinutulungan, palasimba ka, at hindi ka nalilate. Talagang faithful ka. Pero at the, at the end of the day, wala ka pala sa book of life. <laughs> ang saklap naman nun. Pwede ba yun? Opo, pwede. So you've got to be safe. Amen. So, I hope the Lord will talk to you sa area na yan. So, number one, dapat qualified ang estudyante. For rudiments, number one, the student. Number two, the scripture. Ngayon, ang problema, i-consider mo yun, ano ang belief mo dito? Kasi ito yung pag-aaralan mo eh. Kung ano ang ugali mo dito at ang pagtingin mo dito, it greatly also affect you. It greatly affect your understanding. Kung iba ang pananaw mo dito, it will also hinder your understanding sa Word of God. Ibig sabihin, kung may duda ka dito, are you listening? Kung may duda ka sa librong ito, ang makukuha mo lang, duda. Tamang duda. Duda lang. It will never be faith. Because the Bible says, Lobat, Faith cometh by hearing, Mr. Operator, and hearing by the Word of God. Kung wala kang belief dito na this is perfect, 100%, the Word of God, walang mali, you could never get faith. Kahit anong tumbling-tumbling mo dyan. Pag sabi mo na may mali itong Biblia na ito, may problema tong Biblia na ito. Are you listening? Pag ang ugali mo, attitude mo dito ay mali, ang makukuha mo lang ay unbelief. But never faith. Hello? Kaya importante. Are you confident? Ang tanong po dito po mga kabatid, kanina, are you confident sa student that you have the Holy Spirit in you? Ngayon, ang tanong dito sa scripture na i-consider natin, we need to be confident that we have in our hands the book that the Spirit of God authored for our study. Or can you say with all of your heart that I have the perfect Bible? I have the perfect Word of God. Walang duda that I have the Word of God and I'm confident. Kasi pag hindi ka confident dun, malaking dagok yun. Kasi parang nagbabasa ka lang ng newspaper, nagbabasa ka lang ng mga textbook, nagbabasa ka lang ng ano na, hindi mo naman 100% pinaniwalaan yun eh. Kaya walang dating sa'yo eh. Tama? Kaya baliwala lang to sa'yo eh. Kaya ganun po mga kapatid. May problema ba? Ang problema ko palagi, nasisiraan ako ng mic eh. Talagang pangit ba talaga ang boses ko? Sige na nga. Uh, parang jablo nito. Ay, ganda pala nito, no? Ang jablo, grabe. Kahit saan na lang conference friend, sa akin, ito na timing lahat. <laughs> Hindi ako naninira, ha? Dahan-dahan pa nga ako nag-preach, eh. Paano pa pag si EJ mag-wild, tatay, tatay, tatayo dito? 
Buti ya seniornya. Kasi kung hindi, di. <laughs> di ang punto, kung may duda ka dito, kung you believe this book na 98 or 99.9 percent, yung 0.1 percent na doubt would ruin everything. Because faith is 100 percent. Zero doubt. Eh, wala naman eh. Ang makukuha mo dito sa Word of God, faith eh. Pero kung i-treat mo lang to na kagaya ng mga textbooks nyo sa law school, sa school natin, or ano po, or medical, or ano, na may duda kayo. Iba dun opinion, iba dun ano, thoughts lang ng mga tao. Kaya hindi mo masyadong pinagtitiwalaan at kinukuha na ng isang bagay. Kaya hindi mo masyadong siniseryoso. Kaya you don't care whether naintindihan mo o hindi. Anyway, it's just opinion. Newspaper, hindi naman masyado eh. Wala kang regard na maayos sa book na ito. Eh, ang kailangan natin dito, makakuha ng understanding. Eh, pero kung wala kang faith, wala kang understanding. Kaya nga sabi nila, the Bible is not hard to understand. Sabi ng isa, it is hard to believe. You, you know why? You don't understand? Because you don't believe it. Ang alam mo, may mali to. Ang alam mo, may kulang to. May question sa mind mo na hindi settled. Makang murang, parang may contradiction. Parang may ganito, problema, ganito, ganyan. Mga kapatid, our attitude is this. Romans 3, let God be true. And every man a liar. You give God the benefit of the doubt. Hello? Give Him the benefit of the doubt. Ibig sabihin, kung tingin mo na may mali dito, mukhang mali ito ah. Mukhang mistranslation ito ah. Mukhang contradiction ito ah. Ang giving God the doubt is, baka kulang lang ako sa pag-aaral. Baka hindi lang ako ganun nagtitiwala sa Diyos. Baka ako ang mali. Totoo talaga, ikaw ang mali. Because God could never be. Our attitude is, God is true, I'm a liar. God is perfect and I commit mistakes. His word is true. My understanding is at fault. So pray more. Study more. And you will discover later that God is true. And that God is faith. That's your attitude. You don't read the Bible rationalistically. Now, you will find errors rather than truth. You will find faults rather than truth. That's skepticism. Hindi ka naman tinuruan ng textual criticism. You are told not to criticize the Word of God, but you are told to believe the Word of God. Pag may problema ka dyan sa scripture na hinawakan mo, wala. Malaking ano yun. Pwede kang save, pero na-miss mo, hello, na maintindihan dahil ang balakid mo ay unbelief. Itindihan niyo po? Naniniwala ka na salvation, na save ka, na galing sa salita ng Diyos, ang iba hindi mo paniniwalaan. Now, ito po ang problema. If you believe that there's mistake in this Bible and there's no perfect word of God today, I'll say this to you. Everything you have believed is in jeopardy. Everything you have believed is called in question. You believe that there's heaven. You believe that there's hell. You believe God is true. You believe that God is real. You believe that He died for you 2,000 years ago. You believe that He rose from the dead. You believe that you say that you're saved. You believe that you will be going to heaven. You believe that your sins are forgiven. Pero may question mark ka dito sa librong ito na hindi ito perfecto. Everything is jeopardized. Are you listening? What do I mean by that? Paano ka nakasigurado that what you believe, what you say you believe, ay yun pala yung mali? How could you be convicted, could be absolute about something in the Word of God when you said that there's mistake somewhere in this book? Slightest deviation and unbelief, you already lose trust. 
And losing trust is losing faith. And losing faith is sin of unbelief. Okay, it's so important. Hindi ko kailangang matalino. But I have to believe God that He preserved His word. I believe God more than the scholars. I believe what He says more than those professors who says that there's mistakes in this book. I believe it by faith as what is written. Because God said it. And I will hold God accountable to what He promised me. And I believe that He is not a liar. Yun lang eh. Hindi mo naman kailangan malalim about sa King James issue eh. Which is, it is also good thing. Pero ang punto ko po mga kapatid, convicted ka na ba? Baka you are still in search of the better translation. You are still in search of a, of a better version. Pag hindi ka pa settled dun, paano ka na-settled sa kaligtasan mo? Sino source mo? Kasi kung ito ang source mo ng faith, sana ano yun? Imaginary lang pala ang source mo. That's a very important thing. Are you confident that what you have in your hand is the book that God authored? Kung hindi, ah, tao lang yan. Maraming beses na ako naka, ka, ano, hindi ako niniwala sa Bible. Encounter sa tagal ng ka, kausap ng mga tao. Hindi ako niniwala sa Bible. Kasi sulat lang ng tao yan. Napaka-foolish na argumento. Sulat lang tao yan. Eh, sasag- sasagutin ko, eh, paano pag sulat ng kabayo, maniwala ka? Sul- sulat ng unggoy, sulat ng ganito. Eh, sasabihin ko, sulat ng kamay ng Diyos. Lalong hindi ka maniwala. Ang kamay mismo ng Diyos, just like the table of stone. Written by the finger of God. Mas lalo kang dito. Right. So, skeptic. Di daw siya maniwala sa Bible dahil sulat ng tao. Ba't nagbasa ka ng jaryo? Di ba? Ba't nagaganito ka? So, ang punto ko lang, are you confident? I may not de- explain all the details, but yun lang gusto kong drive dito sa scripture. Eh. Yun ang requirement ko eh, na para ma- maintindihan natin. Eh, no? So, God has magnified His Word above His own name. That's in the Bible. And God's Word is eternally settled in heaven. Psalm 119 verse 89. Ano pa? God has communicated His Word to mankind. 1 Timothy 3.16 and 2 Peter 1.21. Ano pa ang i-consider natin? God's words were written down so that they could be made eternally available to men. The word of God which liveth, ang sabi ng Bible, and abideth forever. And God promised to preserve His word. I cling on that promise. Do you believe that? The grass wed there, the flower faded, but the words of our God shall stand forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words will not pass away. In that verse, sabi dyan sa, Roman, uh, sa uh, Proverbs 12, verse 6 and 7, ano siya? The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in furnace of earth, purified seven times. What's the promise? Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, and thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. God said He is going to keep it. God said He is going to preserve it. At settled na ako dun. Tapos na ako dun. Go ahead. It's, it's your word against God's word. You say otherwise, sabi mo, ay hindi, wala nang preserved word of God ngayon. Ay hindi, wala nang inspired word of God ngayon. Ay hindi, wala nang perfect word of God ngayon. Ngayon, sasabihin ko sa'yo, it is your word against God's word. And I believe God's word than your word. Ganun lang kasimple. Ba't ka umaniwala sa'yo? Dahil nakapag-aral ka ng ganito, nakapag-ganito ka, dahil nakatapos ka ng ganito, tapos magdidemand ka sa akin na maniwala ko sa'yo, eh ba't i-deny ko ang creator ko? Ba't i-deny ko ang most powerful? Ba't i-deny ko ang author ng lahat ng bagay na ito? Ba't i-deny ko at pipiliin kita? Good. Comparing of attainment, anong na-achieve mo sa na-achieve ng Diyos? I believe God. So it's your word against God's word. I'll take God's word. 
Mga kapatid, amen? amen. So, mga ano lang yung mga general thoughts para, kasi dami tayong details eh, kung gustuhin natin. Ibang pag-aaral yun. So, God's Word is in harmony with His nature and character. Amen. Pag sinabi natin harmony, if God is holy, His words must be holy. Amen. Which is, that's the Bible said, holy words of God. If God is immutable, cannot change, His words cannot change. If God is eternal, His word is eternal. Hello? If God is faithful, His words are faithful. Lahat po yun, kung anong karakter ng Diyos, yan yun. If God is perfect, His words are perfect. If God is inerrant, infallible, His words are infallible. If God is perfect, then He's perfect. Ibig ko lang sabihin, who God is, so also His word. Kaya ang tawag nito, God's word. Sabi-sabi nila, This is the word of God! This is the word of God. Maya-maya, pag sa, pag sa institute, sa kanilang Bible school, sa classroom nila, class, may malito. Class, hindi to perfect translation. Class, pag ginaganon mo, Brad, wag kang mag, wag kang mag race, race dito na per, uh, this is the word of God if you don't believe this is perfect. If you don't believe that this is inerrant, infallible, preserved, inspired, holy words of God. Wala kang business mag race You're a Bible critic. You're not supposed, you have no business to teach the Bible. I'll say this, if you don't believe that there's perfect word of God, you have no business to study it. And you have no business to preach it. You are just a hypocrite person if you said that there's mistakes. Sabi-sabi kang may, may mali-mali ka dyan. Eh, ba't pinipreach mo? But ginagamit mo? Di ba? Huwag na, high blood pa ako. Makapag-mention pa. May tatlong pillars na masasabi natin, we have really the Word of God in our hand. Una, it's yung doctrine ng inspiration, doctrine ng preservation, at doctrine ng translation. Hindi dapat pwedeng ipaghiwala yan. They should go together. So the Word of God must be inspired, it must be preserved, and it must be translated in a language where we can understand. Dapat maintindihan natin. That's why we have this. And wala, walang isa dyan na hindi importante. Sige, may inspired Word of God ka, pero walang preservation. Saan na ngayon yun? Well, Lost. Oh, may inspired, perfect Word of God. Preserve ang perfect Word of God. Pero hindi translate. Anong saisay doon? Anong benefit? Ano po? Hindi mo maintindihan. Uh, Apano, Brother Jer, pag magsasabi ako sa inyo ngayon, I can't find through and I fry kutukutu. <laughs> ako lang kaintindi doon. Maganda yun. Sabi ko, si EJ ay pogi. <laughs> pag, ulit, pag, ulit. <laughs> pag hindi ko ito translate yun, anong saisay? E paano pag magcha-Chinese ako di o pag maghihibro ako dito? Na ni isa wala kang maintindihan. Paano pag magi-Greek-Greek ka to dito? Wala din naman ko alam eh. Wala ako, hindi naman kailangan 'yun eh. Ang point mga kapatid, what's the point of having a perfect original and preserved original in Hebrew and Greek where no man could read and understand? Absolutely. It has to be translated. So there must be an inspired, preserved translation. And glory to God, we have that. So may lessons ako dyan. Hindi na natin ano, tingnan po yun mga kapatid. Uh, ano po natin para makuha po tayo. Ibang, ibang ano po yan. Ibang, ibang, ang dami niya, no? Daming mga ano po. Ang daming. Importante po yung inspiration. Kasi yun po ang nagbibigay ng buhay. Kung wala yun, wala tayo, no? So... Now, gusto kong bunta ko dito sa inspiration. The focus of inspiration is not the act of God in giving the scripture, but on the life that actively abiding and operating in the scripture. So the nature of inspiration resides in the words, not in precept, not in paper, and in ink. It's words. Sabi doon, sa John 63, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words are life. The words are spirit. It is not about what language. It's not about what ano po. But it's the words. Exactly the words. Kahit nandun sa iba't ibang language, basta same lang siyang word na yon In a different language. Pag sinabi kong guapo, at sinabi ko sa English, handsome. 
It's just the same word in different language. Tama? So, yun ang point. Wala, walang ano dun, mas lamang. Parehas lang yun. Nakuha po natin punto. So, it's about the word. So, hindi po ganun po. Ang, yun ang focus. Yan po, without the inspiration, dead ang Bible. Kasi yun ang pinaka-life. In spirit Asian. Yun yung morphology kanina. Ang ibig sabihin ng inspiration, in spirit Asian. Prefix in, that means inside. Spear, spirit, that means the spirit. Asian means the act of. So, when you put them together, it is the action of the spirit in. So, ibig sabihin, without inspiration, this is the book. What separates this book from other book? It, this is the only book given by inspiration of God. The rest are inspiration of men. And inspiration has something to do with life within. Amen. This means it is a living book. Amen. Remove inspiration, you remove its life. Right. Remove inspiration, you're saying that there's no spirit and it's a dead book. Amen. <clears throat> Are you listening? Those people who said, Di ako naniniwala na may inspired word of God pa ako. May inspired word of God pa ngayon kasi original yun. Hindi mo alam ang sinasabi mo. At hindi mo alam ang damage sa statement na yun. Okay? Kung ganun ang ini-insist. Dito po, scriptural principle of inspiration is, <clears throat> inspiration makes scripture living and abiding. Yung sinasabi ko kanina, without inspiration, it's lifeless. It's dead. Next, inspiration makes the scripture to be the very words of God. Ang sabi ng given by inspiration of God. So kung hindi po ito inspired of God, therefore inspired of men to. Therefore, this no longer the words of God. It's the words of men. Pero, pag naniwala ka na ito ay given by inspiration of God, you also believe that it is coming from the mouth of God. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When you believe that this is inspired of God, this, the, every word dito is coming from the mouth of God. Amen. Kung hindi ka naniwalang inspired to, sabi mo, sulat ng tao lang to. Ganun lang kasimple. Hindi to sulat ng translator, translate lang nila, sulat to ng Diyos. Amen. Next, mga kapatid, inspiration makes the scripture spiritual. Ibig sabihin, without inspiration, this is a carnal book. Without the Spirit of God in this book, this is a carnal book. The same as dictionary, the same as encyclopedias, the same as your textbook, the same as your tabloids and newspapers. Are you listening? Yep. But what separates this book, mga kapatid, from all other books? This is the only book that you could say, spiritual. Amen. Can you say that? Okay, when you remove inspiration, you remove its spirituality. Issue ngayon eh. Wala nang inspired ngayon. Preserve na lang. Pambira. Anong sense na may in, wal, uh, wala nang may preserve na inspired uh, walang inspired? Ano yun? Nag-preserve ka ng patay? Ano? Mami? O anong tawag mo doon? In, in, nilagyan mo lang formally? Anong klaseng? Kaya nga may preservation eh kasi may ipipreserve eh. Ang ipipreserve yung buhay niya, yung words niya, yung life niya. Hindi mo pwedeng paghiwalayin yun. Yep. Ah, kapatid. Next. Ano sabi? Inspiration refers to scripture, not men. Ang sabi ng Bible, all scripture, not men. So who cares about that man? God inspired a book. Hindi tao. Mga kapatid. Next. Inspiration refers to all scripture. All. So when you take this as as the Bible, take it as a whole. Don't say na, ah, 50% inspired, 90% inspired. <laughs> take it as a whole. All scripture is given by inspiration. Not 50-50. Uh, 95% accurate, 10% ay medyo question mark. Walang ganun. Kung may isa kang hindi maniwala nito, take it na lahat na hindi. Ganun lang kasimple. Next, inspiration makes the scripture effectual. Ibig sabihin, it effectually worketh in you that believe. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 So, bakit siya effective? Anong sabi ng Bible po mga kapatid? 
The law of the Lord ano, is perfect. Converting the soul. It can convert a soul. It can, the testimonies of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. We become all wise. <laughs> Wiser than any of those learned men because we have that. It's effective. It can challenge you. It can rebuke you. It is, sabi na, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, instruction in righteousness. It can correct you. It is a two-edged sword na once it, it is preached, tamaan ka talaga. Tagus talaga. At masasaktan talaga tayo. But it can heal at the same time. It can break. It can heal. Amen. It can destroy and it can mend as well. Both. Sabi, the words of the Lord are, sabi na, sabi na dito po mga kapatid, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Amen. And of the joints and marrows, even the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It's effectual. And what makes it effective? Because it is alive. Mga kapatid, sabi ng Bible, a, a living dog is better than a dead lion. Kahit liyon pa yan, pagpatayan, walang saisay. Hindi mga gagat yun. Walang power yun. Amen. A, div, a, a living, ano po, mga kapatid, dog is better than a living lion. A dead lion. So, ang punto lang natin po, mga kapatid, Kahit sabihin mo pa, kung hindi kami niwala, kung walang spirit of God, to patay to, eh anong saysay, anong effect? Wala. And lastly po mga kapatid, dito, inspiration makes all scripture profitable. Kaya nga, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Ibig sabihin, if you do not believe in inspiration, if there's no inspiration, you cannot get any profit. Now, I'd like you to connect with John 6.63. It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. Pag flesh, profiteth nothing. Pag spirit, merong profit. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So, pag sinabi mong inspired, this is not coming from the flesh. This is coming from the spirit. Amen. And if galing sa flesh, profiteth nothing. Pero galing sa spirit, it profited much. Amen. Amen. So, yun yung gusto ko maintindihan. So, you've got to believe either if you don't believe that this is not in, if you don't, if you believe that this is not inspired, then you have to believe that this is also dead. You have to believe that this is not profitable. You have to believe that God commits mistake. You have to believe that there's no power. There's no effect on this book because it's a dead book. And what makes this effectual, what makes this profitable, what makes this living is inspiration. Removing inspiration as if tinanggalan mo ng buhay ang salita ng Diyos. Kasi ang salita ng Diyos ay buhay. Po, mga kapag. Next. Preservation. Uh, na natin. It's not enough that God wrote His words in a book. He has also to preserve them through history so all ages can have them. Remember the Word of God, your Bible, is the only ultimate proof that you have for your faith. And the ultimate proof of your faith is that in that book po, mga kapatid. So, Satan wants to get rid of that authority at uh, ano po, tanggalin yun, yung capacity in our hands to have what God Almighty says. And you need to know, ito yung just business natin today, instead of questioning kung mayroon bang Word of God or preserved, inspired Word of God, ang business natin, you need to know where, where God's Word is because Satan is interested and he has planned an effective program in place to corrupt that book po, mga kapatid. So if the scripture is given by inspiration of God and then God was not active in preserving it in all generation, then His initial act of inspiration was a waste of time and divine effort. Eh, sabi na isang writer, inspiration without preservation is meaningless. Nonsense. Ta Kaya dapat magkakasama tong dalawa. If there is no preservation, then the words of God were on this earth at one time available, and now are lost. If there's no preservation. Wala tayong Bible today. Wala tayong masasabing source ng ating doktrina today and truth today. Saan tayo kukuha? Saan tayo tatakbo? 
magsiuwian na tayo. Walang Bible conference kasi kung walang ganun. Huwag ka na mag-church kung walang ganun. Kasi ang sinusunod mo lang after all ay utos ng tao, hindi utos ng Diyos. But praise God, we have it. Amen! Amen. Praise God, it is available po mga Amen. Inspiration without preservation was a divine waste of time. God was just wasting His time na nagbigay siya one time ng perfect book. Then, throughout the years, many years later, namatay na, nawala na, at wala na. God is a failure. Hindi po, mga kapatid. So, but glories to Him, His powerful hands were the one who kept them perfectly. So, Bible preservation refers to the biblical doctrines and historical process by which God has kept His word pure and perfect after giving it to man. So, the act of God by which He keeps and protects the word of God so that every word is exactly of His choosing and completely without error. So preservation deals with the process where the words of Scripture given by inspiration are passed on from generation to generation. More simply, the act of God in keeping the inspired Scripture to continue. That's preservation. Okay? So preservation guarantees forever. Because of preservation, we, we have this in the Bible that it, the Word of God is founded forever. The Word of God is settled forever. The Word of God standeth forever. The Word of God is preserved forever. The Word of God endureth forever. The Word of God abideth forever. And the Word of God liveth forever. These are Bible terms. I did not invent it. You may search and... And that guarantees forever. That guarantees heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. When the sun is gone, the words will still be there. When the moon and the stars will st stop to shine, the word of God still stands. Amen. That's the thought na gusto ko makita natin. Next. If God promised to preserve His word and God cannot lie, do you believe that God cannot lie? Do you believe that God promised His word? preserve His Word, and God always fulfill His promise, then it would make more sense to believe in preservation than to deny it. Baptist-Baptist tayo, at ang Baptist natin, B pa lang, Bible is our sole authority. Tapos ikaw pala yung number one na nag-question mark sa perfection ng Bible. May, kun may problema. Pero, it, make, it takes, it's so easy to believe it because God said it, than not to believe it. Tama po ba? Now, in order to adopt a contrary position, anong contrary position? You don't believe that there's inspired, preserved Word of God. In order to adopt that contrary position, kagaya ng maraming Baptist today, at kaya gami ng madaming religion and religious church, uh, churches today. Now, one would have to agree to one of the following suppositions regarding God's foundational nature and character. If you don't believe in, in inspiration and preservation, then you have to agree with this. Number one, God didn't mean what He said. When He said, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, Thou shalt preserve them from this generation, He don't mean that. When He said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but My word shall not pass away. When He said, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, and the word of God shall stand forever. Amen. When He said that, uh, 1 Peter 1.23, Being born again, not by corruptible seed, but by incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. They're all wrong. That God didn't mean it. Amen. Oh, walang nag amen. <laughs> Next, you have to adapt that God's word cannot be trusted because He can and has lied. Amen. Sabi ng Dios ipe preserve niya. Tapos ang tuto, he wala pa lang na preserve. God is a liar. How could you trust it? Number three. God is unwilling or unable to fulfill His promises. Or simply means, do you believe that God failed? God is not powerful enough. God is not faithful enough. God is not sovereign enough. I hope, nakuha natin. So preservation, therefore, my job, listen, is not to determine kung saan ako hanap or not it's not to determine whether or not God preserve His words. Hindi mo. Preserve ba talaga ng Diyos ang kanyang salita? That's not your duty. 
Because kung ganun ka, kung may question mark ka, that's a direct denial sa, sa scriptures. The openly nagsasabi na pinreserve ng Diyos ang kanyang salita. Amen. Rather, my duty is to discover the true word of the true word, i-discover mo ano yung true word and where it is in the world today. Alam kong may preserve word of God today kasi God said it. Wala question yun. Pero ang tanong na ngayon, ano? Yun na lang duty mo. By, based on facts and evidence, ano yun? What book? Ang daming versions eh. Ang daming ano eh. What book? Ang daming translation eh. Amen. So the process, uh, ito na po yung translation. Ito na yung turning into one language to another language to bring life and prevents that translation or even to improve the state of something. Translation keeps God's word alive. Ito yung purpose ng translation. Translation is one of the means of preservation. And through translation, Christ and His words can be made known to all nations and to all generations. Kung walang translation, hindi maintindihan ng inchik. Hindi maintindihan ng mga, Budi, ah, ng mga Hindus. Hindi maintindihan ng mga Pilipino. Hindi maintindihan ng, hello, ng mga Russians. Hindi maintindihan ng sino mang tao kung walang ano po. Who cares? Ano yung Hebrew at Greek? Wala naman silang pakialam doon. Kung hindi translate in a language where they could understand, hindi makilala si Kristo. Paano mo ay maipangaral ng Ibanghelyo? Salamat. Amen. Nakaabot sa atin ang libro sa isang lingwahe na naintindihan natin. Ang salamat na itong libro na ito na i-translate faithfully din sa lingwahe na para maintindihan din nila. Okay? So, translation bridge understanding. Yun ang importance ng translation. Sinabi ko ulit, sabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 14, I would rather have five words na naintindihan ko kaysa multitude of words, thousands of words na wala akong naintindihan. So, what's the purpose why it should be translated? What's the purpose why it's translated? To bridge understanding. Po mga kapatid. Dahil dyan nag-work ang Holy Spirit. Po mga kapatid. So, why would God inspire the originals and then lose them? Right. And another thought, why would He preserve copies then not translate them as perfectly as originals? May copies, pero corrupt naman. Why would He preserve copies pero and not translate them as perfectly as the original? Eh di ba, balik ulit tayo sa original. Kung ganun. Another thought, what benefit would man or God gain from lost, perfect, inspired originals and perfect preserved copies which no living person could read? By the way, be patient with us. Walang rightly dividing kung hindi ka settled dito. Kasi ang rightly dividing, kinuha mo lang sa King James Bible yun. At sa King James Bible mo lang mahahanap yun. Wala na iba. At yung word na study, King James Bible mo lang mahanap yun. Kaya bago tayo mag-approach kung paano pag-aralan, alamin mo muna, ikaw ba'y naniniwala dito? Kung wala, wala. Wag kang, wala kang business na mag-rightly divide. Umuwi ka na lang muna. Magtanim ka ng pinya dyan sa... Ano, may profit pa tayo. Di ba? Pastor ka, tapos ikaw nagsasabi, Church, may malito. Abay, mag-resign. Pag may pastor ka na, mag-resign ka. Ay, preach, preach ka, preacher ka ng... Ano, preacher ka ng word of God, preacher ka ng opinion mo. Di ba? Parang hindi akma. Preacher ng word of God. Tapos siya yung nag-instill ng doubt. No, classing minister of God yun. Hindi qualified yun. Tama? So, inspiration, preservation, and translation. So, no inspired, preserved translation means no new birth. No inspired, preserved translation means no understanding because ang inspiration nagbibigay ng understanding. At ang bibigay, sabi doon, being born again, 1 Peter 1.23, not of corruptible seed, but by incorruptible, by the word of God. Ano ka na word of God? Not born again? By the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Next, no inspired, preserved translation means no learning, no comfort, and no hope. Kaya sabi sa, Roma, first, uh, sabi sa Romans 15.4, those things ye heard the four times were written for our learning, 
that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Saan ka nakakuha ng hope? Sa scripture. Eh kung walang inspired, ang scripture doon, given by inspiration. Eh kung wala, saan, anong, saan ka kukuha ng hope? Wala. Kaya you've got to believe kung may hope pa, hindi eh may nagsasabi sa'yo na may hope pa. At yun ang salita ng Diyos. So, no inspired preserved translation means no profit. Kasi ang inspired scripture lang ang nag-profitable. Next, no inspired preserved translation means nothing to search. Kasi sabi doon, search the scripture. Eh, wala na palang word of God na perfect. Eh, ano isi-search mo? Eh, yung scripture doon, perfect yun eh. Tama? Eh, inutusan kang search the scripture eh. Ano isi-search mo? Next, no inspired preserved translation means nothing to rightly divide. Nothing to study and rightly divide. Bakit? Sabi sa 2 Timothy 2.15, study. To show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of what? Truth. Eh kung, kung may mali yun, word of lies na yun. Eh dapat meron kang word of truth bago ka mag-aaral eh. Bago ka mag-rightly mag divide, meron ka dapat available word of truth. Convicted ka dapat na may word of truth tayo. Yun ang importante dun eh. Maraming nagra-rightly divide pero hindi sila niniwala na perfecto to. So kaya wala epekto sa buhay. Knowledge lang, hanggang ulo lang. Parang rabis lang. Hanggang pupunta sa utak. Patay. No inspired, preserved translation means no faith. Kasi ano, bakit no faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Eh ano, kung hindi to perfect, eh therefore hindi to word of God. Eh saan kakukuha ng faith? <laughs> hindi mo naman inimbento ang faith eh. Source ng faith ito. Amen. Ang word of God na yun, perfect yun, galing sa Diyos yun. Kaya anong kuha, makuha mo? Doubt. Kaya dapat either, it, it, mga kapatid, mas madaling maniwala na may inspired, preserved translation kaysa hindi. Kasi marami kang, everything is jeopardized kung hindi. Handaan natin yan. No inspired, preserved translation means no word of God to live by. Anong ibig sabihin? Matthew 4.4 Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Sabi ng Diyos, you live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. E paano ka mamuhay ng every word kung wala namang available na every word? Nag-demand si Kristo doon na mamuhay ka by every word. Dapat available yung every word na yun. Dapat may pagpinaghugutan tayo ng every word na yun. Mga kapatid, huwag natin itong i-underestimate kasi wala kang business na mag-move on sa pag-aaral kung hindi ka saved. Pangalawa, wala kang business na mag-move on sa pag-aaral kung hindi ka convicted and confident that we have the perfect word of God. Yun lang ang gusto ko. Kahit hanggang dito ako conviction, bahala na sila sa buhay nila na kung hindi ko matapo, o oh, mahataba pa oras ko. May isa pa kong oras mag-rightly divide. Saan ka niyan? <laughs> No inspired, preserved translation means no available word of God. Pwede kayong magkape, ha? pwede kayong umihi, bahala kayo ako. Ano lang ako dyan? Anong ibig sabihin? No available word of God talaga. Kasi, ang word of God sa Bible, inspired yun eh. Preserve yun eh. Pero kung wala na yun, dahil translation na lang, ay wala na talaga ang word of God. Now, do you believe that? Hindi. Siyempre, it must be given by inspiration, it must be preserved, and it must be translated perfectly, as good as the original, in a language where we can understand. So, glory to God. The evidence is clear that when we hold the King James Bible in our hands, we have the very Word of God in our possessions, in a language where we can understand. Now, why does it matter why do I have to believe that there's the perfect, inspired, preserved translation in my hand? Why does it matter? Is it a, is it a great issue? I, yes, it is. Very, very great issue. Mga kapatid, sabi ko nga sa marami pang preachers, for many, many years, ito na lang ba? Palagi? Ako? Buti na lang na ex-host ko sa sa YouTube or sa Facebook, yung lahat ng 
Meron ako dito kasi pag conference hanggang dito lang ako na stuck eh. I would like to dun sa na pero hindi pwede. Foundationals are foundationals. They're so important. Rudiments are so important. Yeah, I'm waiting for that man over there, guy over there. Now they will he will take this mantle and will move on to perfection na. Pero sa mga susunod na meeting, ano natin yan? Why, this, why does it matter, mga kapatid? Why should I take the issue na, na dapat, bago ko mag-aral, bago ko masay, bago ko ganito, dapat convicted ako na may word of God? Bakit? Anong meron? Nehemiah 9.5 po, mga kapatid. Because God's name is above all. Yan sinasabi ng Bible. Pero po mga kapatid, Psalm 138 verse 2, God has placed His word above. Sorry ha, typographical error. God has placed His word above His name. Ha, na, nagkamali. God placed His word above all His name. Psalm 138 verse 2, sabi niyo, I will worship toward thy holy temple. I will praise thy name toward thy loving kindness. You know, sabi ng Bible dyan? For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Importante ng Diyos ang kanyang pangalan that every knee should bow. Napaka-importante. Every tongue should confess about that name. Importante sa Diyos ang pangalan that there is no other name given among heaven whereby we must be saved. Napaka-importante yun. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it, run it into it and be saved. The name of the Lord is almost everything sa kanya. It, it bears His reputation and His power. And yet God said, For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Kung may pinaka-importante at binibigyan ng pansin ng Diyos, it's His word more than His name. Why does it matter? Because it mattered to God. And it should matter to me. If God gave importance to His word more than His name, me, as a Bible student, as a Bible believer, should give importance to the word of God above all else. Are you listening? That's why it matter. So, encouragement ko na naman to. I should not be tired of warning and reviewing and teaching people with these things. Next, 1 Thessalonians 2.13 The word works when it is believed. Why does it matter that should, I, should have, I should believe that there's the perfect word of God? Because it effectually worketh in you that belief. You have to take it not as men's wisdom, teach it. Not as the words of men, but at, as it is the word of God. As it is in truth, sabi ng Bible, the word of God, with, which effectually worketh in you that belief. If I don't believe it, anong saisay ng knowledge ko? If I don't believe it, anong saisay ng pag-aaral ko? If I don't believe it, anong saisay ng pagsaliksik ko, pag-church ko, at paggawa-gawa ko ng other things? Nothing. Nada. It can only be effectual. It can only be powerful. It can only work and very effective in changing your life, in changing your heart, in saving your soul. It whatever issues in life, it hinge sa iyong personal belief that these is the Word of God. And that separates the believer from unbeliever. Are you a believer? That's why it matters po, mga kapatid. Dapat makita po natin. Now, inom lang ako tubig. The study. Sige. Oh, five minutes, five minutes. Sige. Ano kayo? Stretch kayo. Mabilis na lang to kasi Five minutes lang ha, balik kayo agad.
Okay, kailang? Okay, lang.